off that strong finish in Iowa. A new poll from Emerson showing Bernie Sanders with a commanding lead ahead of the New Hampshire primary. Pete Buttigieg, his closest competitor, distant second. We were just talking about this with Griff, but is it really time now to consider Bernie Sanders a favorite to win the nomination? Let's ask Republican strategist Siri Kim and Democratic strategist Spencer Crishley. Guys, good morning. Good morning. Morning. All right, Spencer, first to you. I guess no really su a big surprise here with New Hampshire. This is a, a, a strong uh, part of the country for Bernie Sanders. He has a lot of support there. But Pete Buttigieg is really on his heels. What do you make of the numbers? I think that, you know, we have to be very careful with polls, as always, especially polls so close to primaries. We've seen how volatile they are. And if we just look at a collection of polls over recent days, we can see, you know, wide swings for individual candidates. Uh, that said, and even taking into account the neighboring state effect, Bernie Sanders is a strong cam campaigner this time. He was a strong campaigner last time. Uh, I think not to be discounted. I think that uh, Buttigieg pulling ahead so convincingly in Iowa was really striking. And I think it's kind of a tribute to his just solid core as a candidate. He's, he's very young. And as Joe Biden points out, you know, his resume is a little thin for national office. But I think people are probably responding to just the solid core he has as uh, someone with pragmatic solutions mm -hmm. uh, that a lot of people can relate to. So well, I think they're both yeah. very strong candidates. And to your point, you know, it is early going. Uh, you know, we didn't have a clear, four years ago, we didn't have a clear leader in the Republican Party at this point in the campaign. But Siri, to that Joe mm -hmm. Biden kind of uh, loss here and kind of his slipping, it was, Iowa was not good for Joe Biden, uh, Siri, and he's already fired somebody, one of his field directors. Um, the campaign's in kind of crisis mode, it seems. What do you make of that? I think that's the exact right adjective. It is crisis for Vice President Joe Biden. We forget that he came in essentially fifth in Iowa. He already preordained that he was going to lose New Hampshire. But when you are behind in the two early states, I'm not necessarily sure South Carolina is going to be his firewall. He should be in crisis. Well, you know, it's interesting, too, as we look at somebody else who's not in crisis, who actually is polling strongly, and that's Mike Bloomberg. And I take that to you, Spencer, because, you know, you've got an interesting dichotomy happening in the Democratic Party. You've got uh, a billionaire in Mike Bloomberg, who we always hear from Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren is the, is the evil that's ruining the country. You've got socialism on one side and somebody very wealthy on the other. What, what do you think the party is going to lean more towards, Spencer? Well, I, I think the party is just going to lean towards nominating an effective candidate who can beat President Trump. Um, I, I think people worry too much about the, uh, the Democratic Party having its thumb on the scale too much. Um, I do think that we could see something like that happen. Bloomberg has been running a very impressive campaign. A lot of people thought he was just going to be blowing through his seemingly endless uh, supply of money. And money cannot buy success in politics, as many previous uh, rich candidates, self-finance candidates have found. But Bloomberg is running a very smart mm -hmm. campaign. Yeah. I was at uh, an event he held in Monterey recently, and it reminded me of Obama events. Uh, I was on both Obama campaigns, and Obama events were superb. And wow. uh, Bloomberg event struck me as in that league. He's obviously hired really smart people and he's spending his money very intelligently. Well, he's spending money to your point there and that seems to be helping him. Sarah, last word to you. Impeachment ending in Washington. Is this a negative or a positive, do you think, for the Democrats, the impeachment debacle? It seems to me it's kind of maybe hurt them a little bit. I absolutely do think it is a negative for two reasons. First and foremost, you have absolutely solidified President Trump's base as if he needed anything else to energize his voters. And second, when it comes to the Democratic Party, they are in a panic mode because they can't find a narrative to beat the president in 2020. They tried abuse of power. They tried quid pro quo. They tried ineptitude. They tried bad character. They can't seem to nettle, uh, settle mm. on a narrative. And so it's unlikely that they'll settle on a candidate to beat him. Well, Sari and Spencer, we thank you for being here. Fascinating. Here we go with New Hampshire. We'll have you both back. Thanks, guys.